Robert Whittaker is confident that he would beat Drikas Duplessis in a rematch. Rob says he beats him 9 times out of 10. The two fought back at UFC 290 in July, and Drikas won via TKO in the second round. Rob said Drikas is a hungry guy, man. You saw in his last fight, and I think I underestimated that hunger. I still believe I beat him 9 times out of 10. I still believe I'm a better fighter than he is, that I have a better skill set than he does. But mate, big strong guy that's hungry and willing to leave it all out there. You need to match that. I feel like I didn't do that in that last fight. He's definitely on a list that I want to run it back with. I just didn't turn up last time. Like I said, nine times out of 10, I beat him. And I think next time we cross paths, it's going to be one of those nine times. Ian Gary explains how he would like to finish Jeff Neal at UFC 298. What am I gonna finish him with? I'm gonna make him quit. He'll choose when he is though. I would like to kick him to the body and have him do that like when the dog they look when the dogs look at you, like when they're pooing, for protection. That's what they do, right? Dogs look at their owners when, when, when they're pooing because that's when they're vulnerable for attack, right? There's me. Do a face again. When they're like that. <laughs> Michael Bisping breaks down why he believes Justin Gaethje will defeat Max Holloway at UFC 300. You know, I saw Joe Rogan coming out and he it was just a little clip from a podcast. You know, these websites like to do it. Joe Rogan says that he doesn't like the fight uh, of just engaging Max Holloway. He didn't say that. He said he loves the fight, but he's not a fan of it for Max Holloway because Holloway, if Taporia beats Volkanovski, there's a very good chance that Holloway would be next up on deck. With a loss to just engage it, still possible, although the stock would lower a little bit. Uh, and you've got to think on paper, more than likely, just engage it prevails in that fight. I mean, listen, you can never underestimate Max Holloway. He's got a solid chin. He's never been knocked out. But Gage is bigger. He hits harder. You know, he's a knockout merchant. He's got the better wrestling, you know, and he's just naturally a bigger guy, you know. So you've got to go and just, uh, yeah, got to go with Gage in that one for sure. There's absolutely no shame in losing to just engage it. In fact, if anything, he should be respected. Stepping up to 155, it's not like, you know, when you're a champion and you move up to another weight class and you're trying to become a double champ, oh, there's nothing to lose there. You know, he's not necessarily doing that. Yeah, okay, there's a BMF tile. That's legendary. There's only been a couple so far. So that's all well and good. But he's just trying to stay busy. He's just trying to take on the toughest matchups. And as a fighter, former fighter myself, you got to respect that, right? That's why you got to respect Max Holloway here. It's just uh, an incredibly brave thing to do, right? And yeah, yeah, nice. No, all the respect in the world. Molly McCann reacts to receiving a $50,000 bonus after her submission victory last night. I don't think I can kind of put into words about the hate and the unfulfillment that I've received in the last two losses. You've read it, it would have took of hell a long, long, long time. There's a long, long tale of how everyone thought Molly McCann was shite. I lost 30 pounds for this fight. I had the fight in my life and I got a submission finish. I put the dog to bed. A spinning elbow or an armbar, I was coming for one in the week. I just think it's been fitting to be finished twice by a key lock or an armbar and then to do that on my opponent. Um, I'm so overwhelmed. I'm so overwhelmed in the nicest, best way. Um, this win wouldn't mean as much if I hadn't gone through what I've gone through. So I just hope it shows others to, to keep on biting down, keep on pushing forward and keep pushing through that and good will come in the end. I went slow and I feel like I paced it because I didn't know. Albeit in the in the rounds in the gym, I've I've not gassed. But you don't know when you've dropped that low and then refuel back, how are you going to be, you know? Um, I watched Luana Carolina and Julia Storylenko and it looked like the weight could hit them in that fight. Um, so I just took my time. I was patience. Patience was key, speed was key. That, overhand at the beginning um, I hate her I, I really would like to go and see if she's okay um, I've been on the back of two back to back defeats on it, so I really hope she's alright Daniel Cormier reacts to Henry Cejudo announcing that he may retire if he loses to Marab Henry versus Marab goes down at UFC 298 later this month when I hear this from Henry 
I hear that he has now made a full-on commitment again to his athletics and becoming the champion. Mm -hmm. I have heard that after the time away, it was very difficult for Henry to train at the level that allowed for him to not only become the world champion in MMA, but also become the Olympic champion. When you're a guy like Henry Cejudo, who is so motivated, Ben, you know we watched that dude as a young yeah. kid uh -huh. become a world an Olymp Olympic champion and do everything he was told. But when you start to not have that desire to do the things that you yeah. know are necessary to be that, then maybe it is time to start looking away. I, I just think in that quote, he is now telling us, Ben, that he is going to do all that stuff again. And if all that stuff that he did before that led to that level of success doesn't work, now it's time to walk away. Anato Moicano defeated Drew Dober last night via unanimous decision. Tomorrow, when I get home, I'm gonna get my wife pregnant another time. Because if my father, 62 years old, can populate the world, I can too. Money Moicano 3 is coming. After the fight, Moicano posted this to his Instagram. In the caption, he wrote as tough as they come. Hashtag UFC mad respect. Ian Gary caught a stray from Hanato last night. Hanato followed up with this post. He wrote grandpa money. Moicano, 62 years old, still on the game. Conor McGregor reacted to Hanato's performance last night. Conor tweeted, wow, he has a new little baby brother. That's awesome. Fair play, Moicano Sr. Hanato responded, McGregor, I'm your fan. I used to hate you because the trash talk, but you changed the game. I respect you. Nick Diaz was in attendance last night at UFC Vegas 85. This photo is going around social media, which had some fans concerned for Nick and what's on his hand. To read off the top replies on X, with staff, with a bad staff infection, who bit Nick Diaz's hand is the question. Bro's gotta wrap up that hand. Brother does not look healthy. Is that staff on his hand? That staff on the hand though. Bro looks 58, senior citizen. Nick looks terrible. He's looking the roughest he ever has. WTF, he looks like he just got out of the streets. Looks like he just got out of rehab. When did he become a c addict? Man looks like he's on the pipe. Yikes, open wound slash infection? Looking rough. Hope he's doing okay. Wish him the best. And not gonna lie, dude looks 50 years old right now. Sad. And that's going to wrap it up for the news. Thanks for watching. For daily MMA news and content, subscribe to Full Mount MMA and click the bell icon to be notified when we post videos. Here are the three top comments from last video. The first one's from Ryan B. It says Dana versus Hunt at UFC 300. Oil them up. The second one says if they throw out McGregor and Diaz for 300, Chandler has to be the guest ref. And the final one says Connor versus Diaz had a lot of hype years ago. UFC missed the ball not letting them fight years ago. Those were the three top comments from last video. If you want to be featured in the next one, all you have to do is comment down below. And if you missed yesterday's news, click the video on screen right now to get caught up.